Hey guys and welcome back. Uh, good old Krusty's uh, been doing very well for me, but I decided to bring it into the garage and giving it a little bit of love. I already went and adjusted the valves and adjusted the brakes and uh, oil changes, all that kind of stuff. Greased the front end. But one of the issues it's having is it's getting a little noisy. And where it's getting a little noisy, I thought it was a front wheel bearing, but... Let's see if you guys can hear that. So, I think a bearing is starting to go inside the wheel. And if you actually grab the wheel, I don't know if you're about to do one handed. It's got a little bit of play in it, which the type of bearing that's in there really shouldn't have. So, I figured we'd uh, kind of tear into that and uh, figure out what is wrong with it and see about going about getting her fixed. And lo and behold, we have pretty much all four bearings that are inside there a couple of seals, new nut for the outside of it. So let's go tear it apart, see what we find inside there, and at least we have everything to go about fixing it. So without further ado, let's get to wrenching. All right, so I popped the wheel and the uh, brake drum off and get a better peek inside what's going on. And what we have is back here is a gear reduction. And it has basically a shaft on the bottom and then a shaft on top, two different size gears. The gears drop down the ratio from a standard beetle transmission, which is what buses, uh, early buses used. And to get around the fact that they were heavier and had to haul more weight, they just knocked the gear ratio down on the transmission. They did that by out here on the ends of the axles with a set of gear reduction boxes. But I do believe we have a noisy bearing inside one of these, uh, possibly anyway. And uh, we're gonna go investigate a little further on, but I just wanna give you an idea of what is inside here and what is happening. So I'm gonna go get the uh, brake shoes off, disconnect the brake line, get the backing plate out of the way, which is gonna be these four screws and the emergency brake. And that will get us into that assembly, but we have to dig in much further yet. I right, said so backing plates unbolted, I believe, and I have the three bolts off of the uh, upper adjuster and the hydraulic brake lines off the wheel cylinder. Emergency brake is still hooked up. I think we might be able to swing it out of the way. We'll try that first. Yeah, we might need some persuasion. Nope. Wheel cylinder's got to come off. I think, yep, the wheel cylinder's bolting it. Wheel cylinder bolts through to that hub also. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. Sure, have enough right stuff around it from the last time when I did the trans. There we go. Probably would have been a good idea to drain it first, huh? Be nice if that's the bearing that was bad, but I kind of doubt it. I'm gonna pull the drain plug on the bottom, get all the fluid out of it so that we're not keeping on fighting that. The little metal bits in the pan are not a good sign. I just hope I don't have a, a gear issue in there because I do not have any gears for it. I do have stuff for a one ton which is 64 and up. Like Lucy, but not this one. All right, so where are we? Can we get this out of our way? There we go, we're in. I think there's a clip right here. Is that just an O-ring? That's just the O-ring, the ceiling. Try to keep this stuff in order. washer and I haven't uh, opened up a 
book or link yet on this. I'll get rid of that. Don't know which way that bearing comes off. I'm gonna try uh, grabbing something around this. See if I can just pull that bearing off of there. If not. I'm going to start unbolting this whole assembly and see if we can split this case and look inside there. Let's just see if we can kind of walk that bearing out of our way. Probably not going to be able to get a good bite on it. might still have some kind of clip holding it yet too. Alright, let's see if we can get some of the bolts out with this. Nope. That ain't gonna do it. How about I crack them all loose and we buzz it off and you don't watch. Alright, now let's see if we can buzz them out of there. Now the battery will go dead in the drill. I say we probably get a little brass rod and we'll come behind up here. We'll try tapping on the housing, see if we can get that housing to open up for us. Forgot one. This didn't tell me. We'll try with the lightweight hammer first and see if that does it for us. I can't get a good swing on that. I am going to have to get underneath it and get a good shot at it. So I put the drain plug back in on the bottom. Just give me something I can be able to hit off of without bashing the threads up. So let's see if this works for us. I think the only thing I'm doing is killing the drain plug. Betcha. I may have to take out. I may have to take these guys off. I just don't remember. So I think I found the trick to try to getting it off. I just put the drum back on, put the nut on with a couple of threads, and used it like a slide hammer. And that allowed it to at least. far back. Let's pull the two apart. I don't know if I'm able to get that apart without pulling the whole axle off and pulling the clip out of the axle and disassembling it like that. I just don't quite remember. We're in. Kind of pressed back and forth a little bit and got it to come apart. And what it ended up doing was there's a clip. If that's backing all the way. There's a sir clip, C clip. E clip that goes on there and holds that bearing in place but I think what happens is this bearing possibly runs into this gear I think it has an interference issue so here's the other side of it I think this gear does not allow this bearing to come out and clear so what it happened was it popped the clip off allowed enough slack in the uh, setup for it to kind of kick out and down out of the way. Now hopefully I can get this apart and assemble it in a different pattern so that we do not have to go in and get the axle out of the transmission because that's going to be very hard to set up too. You may have to actually take the engine and trans and rotate it on its side and there's C clips and there's clips inside in there. It's just not an easy assembly to get apart. So I'm gonna go clean this up. We're gonna go bring this up on the bench. This one is our, I think, our offending bearing. So we're gonna go see what we do about changing the other ones out too while we're in here. Yes, I'd say 
That's our growler right there. And you can see how that sucker comes off of there. I don't know if they press off or they just need to tap out of there. I got the guy in the press. Let's see if we can get that thing out of there. Looks like we're gonna have to press this guy off this side. Let me, we're gonna need something thin to get onto both sides of that though. Let me see what I can dig up. So, you think that guy's a little noisy? Let's see if we can manipulate with that guy something like that. I got some spacer. Don't forget where that goes, guys. And can we choke up on that with something else a little bit more? I guess we'll go with that. No, we got to get another extension in there. It's halfway down on the cylinder. All right, see if we can get that one out of there. I don't know if that socket's bottoming out. It might be hitting on the sides. I felt like it started moving and got real tight real quick. Yeah, a little bit smaller socket. And let's see if we get that out of there. There's your problem. All right, so back at the truck, let's see what we can get off of the upper. This had the clip on it. It's supposed to have a clip on it. Can we do a little tappy tappy? A little pry barry. There we go. Here's that guy. That one feels fine. Let's get the upper gear off. I don't know about getting that that one out of there. Any is there any other ring or anything holding that? Hmm. I may inspect that really close and look. And we may we may leave that one alone. I don't think the uppers were an issue. I think it was just the lowers. I'm going to inspect that. Do you think we can grab it? I'm just afraid that it's probably pressed onto the the hub. Again, I'm trying to avoid not taking that axle out if I don't need to. It might come out. Yeah. We're going to do that and I'll stick a little bit of a pry bar behind it. Gonna slip the pliers off. I know it is. All right, so let me see if I can choke up. Maybe get a, one of the really big pair of vice grips around it, clamp it. And maybe we can see if we can walk that out of there. And I moved you over so I can get to this side of it. Let's see. With that will. There we go. You got it. How is it? Feels good. But again, we have all new ones, so we'll put those in. And we'll hold on to those <laughs> to the old ones that are good for the other side if that ever decides to, to make a noise. So I need to clean up all this right stuff that I put on there last time, clean all those flanges off, and see what we can do about starting it to get this thing reassembled and hopefully it'll go back together without too much of an issue. So I went and uh, cleaned up all the surfaces. I, I saved you the uh, I know a lot of you guys love the wire wheel noise, but we bypassed. I know some of you guys love the noise of the wire wheel, but I uh, I saved that part for you. You don't have to listen to it. And that, and I put a floor jack underneath it with a board. It's the board down here. Just so the axle is straight because the gear oil wants to come down the axle tube and maintain 
a fluid level of about about that high inside there and of course when I did my little maintenance on this truck yesterday or day before yesterday I uh, topped that off so everything wants to come right back out this tube and that's gonna kind of fight us a little bit for filling it so hopefully I can get this bearing back on I don't think there's anything that should be stopping us from this one and possibly that might even help hold some of the fluid in tappy tappy And I think we could put the gear back on. Um, and I'm trying to think what we need to do on the bottom side. I want to get the bottom side assembled so that I can slip the housing on and possibly put this last bearing on at a, uh, uh, actually, no, do I need, I need to put that together, have this stub inside there and slide the whole assembly on. That's what I need to do. Yeah, sure I do. Nice. Get the gear back on there. And we'll throw a bolt in just so we have something to kind of to pull against. And we got the new bearing. Of course, the axle's going to want to walk itself back in. Let's see if we can tap on that. always want to hit on the surface that you are working with so like on the outer one I was putting in there I'm tapping on the outer race because that's the one that's having the drag on this one the center of the axle is what's stopping me so I am trying to tap on this guy uh, I'm gonna set up put some vice grips on this bolt or get a longer bolt give me a little bit of room and I want to get a like a brass rod and we'll tap around that see if we can work that sucker in there without uh, beating it up and yeah, see if we can work that in there a little bit better didn't find a longer bolt. It's one of those jobs you need definitely need three hands for. Because you gotta pull out on the axle, keep tension on it, but yet hold all the other stuff in place. There we go. Sure, one of you guys can grab these vice grips for me. Would really appreciate it. Yeah, let's go and try to kiss that edge. We need enough to get that clip back in there. Yeah, you try it. I think we got enough room. Right, let's put that clip on. I didn't put that clip back in yet because I want to make sure. I think what the problem was, this gear does not clear the end of this bearing. So if we need to take it back off, we will. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I thought I could be able to fudge it. But no. So I gotta get this bearing back off of here, get this one up into place, then I could put that bearing on. All right, so that gear's off of there. That bearing's off of there. Let's pull that gear off. you go and like so now we could put that bearing on and that's the problem is that it was stopping from clearing that make sure I put the new one on and that guy and go back together just like we did it a second ago and now it should all stay. And then hopefully we can get the whole housing on after that. But we gotta clean it up and get it ready for sealing. Yeah, see if we can get that snap ring in there. Across the garage it goes. Bouncing off the walls.
pliers are screwing me up. The little nipples are not. Nipples are getting in the way. I hate when your nipples get in the way. Come on. That tapper with a screwdriver, you think? Let's try to open it a little bit more. Close. I always like to kind of make sure they're seated though. Sometimes they uh, can fool you. Kind of sit up on top of the groove. So we'll just give her a couple of love taps here and there. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. So now I think we need what? This spacer? I think it's the spacer. Then, well, no, we gotta put a, we gotta, gotta put a bearing here. Where's the housing? All right. So this is what's going on. So we gotta get that bearing on. I think the top. We're just kind of hoping that that bearing sits right in there. Shouldn't be an issue. And then I think we're good to go. So we put that bearing on, dry it up, put the sealer on, see if we can get the cover tapped into place. So I had that wrong. Bearing doesn't go on there. Bearing is gonna sit right here. But what happens is the cover goes on, then the bearing goes on. So we just have to get this assembly ready to get smeared up with the right stuff and then uh, see if we can tap that into place. I just want to show a little bit kind of what happens. So on a Beetle, again, this is the same as a Beetle transmission for the most part, except for one major thing. The, on, on a Beetle, this would be the axle coming out. This would just go right to the hub and drive the rear wheel. And if you can kind of see, that's forward, right? So you got four gears forward, you know, one reverse. Well, on a bus, because you're going through the gear reduction, it flips it to the other direction. So this guy's got to go backwards for the axle to go forward. So in the transmission, the ring gear, you flip it from one side of the, of the differential over to the other side, and now it goes the other direction. And uh, you have, of course, four gears forward and four gears reverse. That would kind of make for a strange commuter. All right, so where we are is I'm gonna go clean the surface up. I wanna go get some right stuff on there. We're gonna go get that cover up on there, hopefully, and get it tapped into place. Hopefully it taps around this bearing. We get that seated on there and then we can get the other bearing over the, the face of it and get it all buttoned back up. All goobered up. Let's see if this will do what we want it to do. Well, not bad. Let me get some screws in that guy and uh, I'm just going to run them in lightly and then I'll tighten them up in about 15-20 minutes after the stuff's set up a little bit. So I went in the house and got a cup of coffee and finished editing the video before this one. Let's go and run these guys down now. See it pushing out the goodies all over. The set said it was complete with gaskets. Unfortunately, it did not come with the gasket. Two gaskets. Should have came with one for here and one for the back of this. It seemed like it worked okay for the uh, first time that I did it with the goof off, so we're gonna just go the same. Should be all right. It's not like it's any pressure in there, you know? And it's a cast steel housing. It's not aluminum. It doesn't go all very much. All right, so we need to get the backing plate up into place. We have a sealer on that too that I let set up and kind of put together and took it back apart so it would kind of cover both sides. Put that in there, we got, we got 
three nuts, three washers. And buzz them in. That'll help hold it in place while we we're uh, doing the rest of it. I wonder if we can maybe throw one of the bolts in down here while I tighten the top up and then we'll take it back out, you know what I mean, for alignment. Let's just shove one of those in there. be a 14. Get out of there. All right. So now I believe we have to don't remember if the o-ring went now then the bearing. Would that make any sense? Why would you need an O-ring there? What is that going to stop from leaking? It'll stop from leaking under the bearing. Would that be correct? I don't remember. Got to go look. Nope. Goes on after. If we can get that guy all the way in. Some of you guys saying, why don't you put the bearing in the refrigerator? Why didn't you heat that up? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Because I didn't. So that's tapped all the way in. Then there's two like thrust washers on that. Then the O-ring, which is working as a seal for that. So nothing kind of leaks out of the axle. And then this guy's got a taper to it. Probably make sure it concentrates all that when you tighten down on it. It kind of cinches down on that seal. But now we gotta prep this guy. It needs to be done. I gotta clean all the crap off of that. We have a new seal for inside of here. We're gonna go tap that out. And again, I gotta clean all this crap off of here. And uh, I do not have a gasket for it, so we're just gonna go again with right stuff. I would prefer the kit to have the gasket, you would think, but we don't. Replace that seal and it's got another uh, thrust washer on the inside of that. It also has a drain hole here that if fluid gets in behind the seal, if it gets to the other side of the seal before it allows it to go and pee on the brakes, it has a drain that just drains it to the back of the backing plate. Hopefully, we can get all that on the bearing. I think a little tap, a little up tap will do. Of course, the only hammer over here is the overkill. There we go. Think how square am I? Don't answer that. And let's uh, see if we can get those guys to start. And we're going to run them in kind of, sort of, but we're not going to crank them down again just like we did with the other one. We're going to let that seal it set a little bit. I also want to come back with an air gun and uh, blow through that hole in the back side to make sure that that passage didn't just get clogged up with that sealer. We'll let that sit. That's all tightened up. What do you say we fill her up with gear oil and see if anything decides to leak out of it other than the mess that I'm making. I think I'll take about half a bottle, half a quart. Again, you, you fill these up, but at the same token, the it will leak from the transaxle down to the uh, gear reduction. 
some of the guys that lower them, the problem is when you lower them, the axle tube back here now faces, it's, it's downhill to the transmission, not downhill to the gear reduction. So the fluid goes from the gear reduction and doesn't maintain the level it's supposed to. When it starts slowing down like that, you know you're kind of back feeding up the, the axle tube now. So I'll let that settle. I'll tweak that a couple more times. And then uh, and the brakes are all on. Don't see anything gooey coming out of the bottom of it. That's a good sign. Wash the brake drum out real quick. Okay. Cancel them out. We'll put that back on. my uh trying to bring it forward to the next hole for the cotter key a little further i don't know if you guys can see that it's got two sets of holes going through it so that one's almost there that should do it Probably not going to be able to see it, but this hole is meant for adjusting the brakes and it has the little adjusting wheels on the brake shoes. BWs do not have automatic, uh, automatically adjusted brakes. You have to go in manually and kind of do them every, usually every time you get the oil change, you kind of run around with a, a brake spoon like you are right here. Just kind of turn them up and go until it locks up and just to the point where it's free. Let's go do the other one. They, they can seize up too, and then you gotta pull the drum off and free them up, put the anti seize on the adjusters. You also wanna make sure your, your emergency brake is all the way off and back. That's true buses, beetles. Back off a hair more on the. You could do it with the uh, wheel on too, it gives you a better feel. Let me go tweak that one one more time. Right up till it locks up. And come off till it feels. I would call it right there. And again, it's the uh, it doesn't spin real free because you got the drag of the gears and you watch the other side. And the tire on the other side wants to turn the opposite direction. All right, it's got to bleed the brakes in that one little spot right there, and I should be able to put the tire on and be done. This is always a little snug. Let's see how it goes. I think sometimes I gotta let the air out of the tire. We're in. I think the one, the stock size is like a, a 185. I'm running a 215 on it. Because the gear ratio is so low, I'm trying to get whatever I can out of it with tires. Sometime, at some point I'd like to do, they have a couple of conversions. One is a, you can go to a straight axle conversion, which still uses the tubes, or they go with a little bit later style with uh, the CV joints from a bus, you, um, a, a bay window bus. But you can't use a bay window transmission because they are mounted totally different. This whole setup, the way the engine and trans is set, is just like a beetle. When it went to the bay window buses, they went with a whole different setup, a, a much beefier transmission. But the transmission is bigger, physically bigger all the way around, so it's not like you can uh, easily put one of those in here. So, someday that may happen. Now we'll wiggly play. You still hear the gears and the trans kind of spinning. But at least you're not dealing with this guy. Yeah. At least that's changed. So we had two of them. Was that one? And that was the outer one. Both of those guys have an issue. And then that one was quiet. And then I think it was the little one. 
is also quiet. I say wipe off my uh, hubcap, let her down, and uh, go for a ride. And let's go see how she does on the old highway. quiet now. Probably should have done it before. Nice and quiet. You throw it into the turn, you hear it rumble a little bit more. And you preload the bearings. Nice and quiet now, though. Race the Porsche. Nice and quiet now. I think what happened was when the transmission failed, it had spit out some uh, fine particulates that made its way down to the gear reduction. And once a, a bearing gets a scratch on it, it's done because one scratch, the ball bearing rolls over it, gets a mark on it, it transfers another scratch a little further on, and before you know it, it just turns the whole thing into white noise and growling that uh, it was doing. I don't seem to remember having an issue with it when I took it apart when I checked them, but nothing saying it didn't have a, get a little beat up from that time period. Passenger side seems fine. We're gonna leave that alone, unless it needs it. And again, I said, uh, I may wanna try to swap it to some, a different kind of setup to get a little bit more highway speed out of it, but for now. Now we got to shift. These are starting to turn already. There's our old forerunner. Look, you caught that. That was uh, the '96 forerunner. It's probably three forerunners ago. That one's still going. The ones that we replaced it with are dead. So if you're buying a 4Runner, go for a 96. It's a good year. <laughs> All right, guys. I think I'm going to go shut you down right about here. Just want to take a little test drive with it, see how it does. Seems like it's just fine. And uh, we will catch you on the next one. Again, thanks for hanging out in the garage and uh, turning a couple of wrenches. Till then, see ya. Trailer Queens.